Hello, welcome back to the shop. We're still not doing any hot forging right now, but I thought we'd talk about a few things people have asked about. And today we're going to talk about the floor and why my floor is what it is. It's really no mystery, no secret, nothing special. It's just a little bit odd, and I'll explain why and uh, hopefully answer the question that was asked. So my floor has three components currently. You can see some brick. I'm kneeling in dirt, and there's concrete over here. And those are the three types of flooring I have in my shop right now. And it may seem like there's some really good reason that I have it that way. And to some extent, no, there isn't. The big advantage to a dirt floor is it's cheap. That's probably what's already existing where you're going to build a shop, or if you're converting an old barn or a shed or something, you probably have a dirt floor. Don't have to do anything else, it's there. The problem is that they get dusty. One of the problems is you lose things. I have little bits of metal, and most of this is scrap, so it's just trash that should go to the recycler. But sometimes it's a part you need, and you lose it in the dirt floor, you may never find it again. It gets covered over very quickly. You also end up with hollow spots in the floor that can be inconvenient. Over here by the power hammer, I've got a place where my, my foot sits, and I end up having to refill this all the time, and it never stays. It's always getting hollow again. So I don't really like a dirt floor for that reason. So I decided I would rather have a brick floor. Why do I have both? It's, like I say, there's no mystery here. I just ran out of bricks. That's all there is to it. When I have bricks and I have time, I'll keep going. But these were salvaged brick that I got for free, and I'm hoping I can find some more free bricks before I finish the rest of the shop. But there are several different styles of bricks in different parts of the shop that are going down, and eventually it'll all be a hodgepodge, but hopefully the whole thing will be bricked. Now, concrete is in this section, and this is a fairly deep pad under the fly press, and this is a fly press leg here. It's about 8 inches deep. Under this power hammer, it's about 18 inches deep. I wish it was deeper, and I wish I had separated this because there's a lot of vibration and stuff rattles off the shelf of the fly press when I use the power hammer. Not a big deal, but a separate pad for the power hammer would have been better. And deeper probably would have been better, but it's not bad. But this is a, just a long strip, and concrete's convenient because you can actually bolt tools that have a base, like the fly press, treadle hammer, power hammer, um, anything like that can be bolted to the concrete. So that's really quite convenient. Now over here by the anvil where I work, it's a dirt floor, but I actually have a rubber mat, partially to help this cushion standing on it all day, and partly because it helps keep that hole from wearing, because there's always a hole here, and my anvil seems to get taller and taller till I fill it in again. So it's kind of a problem. The rubber mat also really stinks if you drop something hot on it, but it does help keep the, the dirt from hollowing out quite as fast. One of the advantages of a dirt floor is that you can set blocks in it, posts for tools. This anvil block for my main anvil is set three feet into the ground. This is built up out of two by twelves and it's got a steel band around the top of it, but it's set three feet in so it is good and solid. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't twist. It's not going to tip. It doesn't bounce. And that is a real advantage of a dirt floor is that you can do this anywhere. If you need to move it, you dig it up, you fill in the old hole, compact it, dig the new hole, and off you go, and it's not like repairing concrete. To some extent, you can do the same thing in a brick floor. You just have to relay the brick around it after you're done. My other anvil I don't use for heavy forging. It's more for things that I need layout, and, it's, and it can be moved around. So it just sits on the brick floor. It would probably be more solid on a solid concrete floor than it is on the brick, because the brick does move a little bit. But it's not bad, and it's still better than an anvil that doesn't have a solid base. You know, some of these metal stands people use are really quite bouncy and rattly, and they don't offer very good support. And this big timber isn't too bad. 
But if this was my main anvil, the one I used every day, I would put a bigger timber and it would be set three feet deep in the floor if I could. Or bolted to a concrete section if I can't set it in. So if you have a concrete floor, you can bolt your anvil down and that's, that's another advantage to concrete. So the way I see it, there are four options for a blacksmith shop floor. You might be able to come up with something else or some hybrid or some combination or something. But in general, it is dirt, which is the cheapest and allows the most freedom for moving tools around as far as where you can dig a hole and set a post for a post vise or a stump for an anvil or something like that. On the opposite end of the spectrum, there is concrete, which is very hard, very hard to work on all day. It's going to wear you out. It's hard on your feet, hard on your ankles, hard on your knees, hard on your back. Very easy to clean. You can bolt power hammers to it. Uh, machine tools that need to be bolted down, like a drill press that's particularly top heavy, for instance. Easy to drill a hole in the concrete and put in anchor bolts. You can bolt an anvil stand down. So there are some real advantages to concrete. Uh, it's, like I say, it's really a clean floor and it's going to be the flattest and most level floor you can get because it's very easy for a competent concrete contractor to pour a perfectly level concrete floor. I don't have that skill. My concrete floors are a bit on the organic side. And I only have that one small section of concrete right now and I'm probably not going to pour much more. The other two options, one is brick, which I like. It is almost as hard as concrete and can be hard on your feet and your back and your knees and all that. But it isn't quite as bad as concrete. Plus, I am not too worried about getting a perfectly flat level floor. And that means every place you step on a brick floor, your foot has to take a slightly different position. It's going to move a little bit as the floor undulates. And that's better for your knees and your, your back and it will fatigue you much less throughout the workday. Brick is easy to sweep. If you need to set tools someplace where you hadn't thought of, you can pull up the brick and set a new post for a vise and then fill in the brick around it. And that's a, quite an advantage. But you can't actually bolt anything to the brick. And if you're doing any really heavy work on it, the brick could crack or it could settle into the, the dirt floor underneath. So they're, it's not quite as hard and durable as concrete. The fourth option, which I don't have in my shop and I've never tried, but I have seen a few people that have done it and I'm real intrigued by it, is actually a wood floor, which seems terrible for a blacksmith shop. But in green wood block, and the one, one I think about the most clearly or that I've seen, is probably four inch sections of black locust four by four fence posts. In the, this particular gentleman's area, that's what they had at the, the local home center for fence posts. It's a rot resistant wood. He just cut a bunch of four inch sections, set them like brick so the end grain is up, and it's softer than brick. It undulates like brick so it's easier on your back. It's easy to sweep. And while it seems like it's a real fire hazard, it isn't bad. If you drop something, it's going to smoke and stink, and you're going to know it, and you can pick up that hot piece of metal and put it someplace safe. And the, because there's no air around that, that wood floor, it's extremely difficult to get it to actually burn. You would really have to be trying hard to get that floor to burn. And as soon as you take the heat source away, it'll go out because there's no oxygen surrounding it. So a wood, solid wood floor like that isn't bad. A framed wood floor with floor joists and floorboards or plywood I think would be an awful floor. It would one be very easy to get that floor to burn, but it's going to bounce and you, you just couldn't get any good work done on it. So I would avoid that. But concrete is relatively straightforward. It's expensive, but it's easy to clean, has some advantages. Dirt is filthy, but it's cheap and it's very versatile. And I think brick is a nice combination and that's why I'm going with brick. And eventually I will have the whole floor bricked with one form of brick or paver or something else. Um, if any of you are really bored and want to come by and lay brick, let me know. I got, uh, I got a shop floor to do. I just need to find brick. But anyway, so that's a quick look at my floor and why my floor is what it is. 
no mysteries, no secret, no super duper wisdom to be passed on here, just a, an answer to a question that somebody had of, of why I had some brick and some dirt. So take it easy, get out to the shop, we'll see you later, we'll get back to actual blacksmithing videos in another week or so. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by, and I appreciate it if you give a like to the video, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you later.